Have you ever been in a rush to get somewhere and you are power walking through and there's someone standing right in front of you, taking up all the space, oblivious to the fact that you even exist? Well, one day I was at the airport and it was one of those rare times that I was there early enough that I didn't have to rush. And I stepped onto the rolling walkway and there was a sign that said, stand to your left and walk to your right. So I stood to my left because I was in no hurry and I could hear someone approaching me from behind and I could tell that they were in a really big rush. So I squeezed myself over to the left to allow them clearance to get by me. And this woman comes flying past me with her rolling suitcase in tow. And right in front of us, in the middle of the walkway, there was a man. Now, I wanted to see this woman pick up her suitcase and leap over this man in a single bound. But instead, she just stopped running. She waited until the rolling walkway came to an end and he sauntered off in one direction and she took off running in the other direction. That interaction stayed with me the entire first leg of my flight. And when I was in a connecting airport, I decided to go get lunch. And I sat down at an empty counter space and I was just about to get ready to eat. And a man came and stood on the other side of me at this in empty countertop. It was kind of like you being in an empty theater and someone comes and sits right behind you. It was so awkward. And normally I would just gather up all my things and just leave. If he wanted to be in the space, that was completely fine. But I thought about that woman on the rolling walkway and I made a decision in an instant that changed the very course of my life. I decided I am not going to move. If he wanted to sit there while I ate lunch, that was perfectly fine with me, but I was not going to give up my space just because he entered it. I am here and this is where I decided to sit. In a few minutes without saying a word, he gathered up his things and he just left. And I thought, oh my goodness, is it really just that easy? I can show up, I can take up space, and it's okay? I thought about all the times in my life that I had minimized myself. When I had whispered, when I wanted to shout, when I went along with the group because I didn't want to stand out. I recall a time that I was at church and a woman approached me and she said, are you Hannah? And I said, yes, I am. How did you know that I was Hannah? And she said, I asked somebody how I would be able to find you. And they said, Hannah will be in the back. Hannah is always sitting in the back. When I thought about my life, I had thought about all the times that I had lived this back burner existence. How I felt is not without precedence. Throughout history, Black people have been told how they can navigate spaces, even how we can navigate the sidewalk. There used to be an expectation that black people would step off of the sidewalk to allow a white person to pass. According to Dr. Ronald L.F. Davis of California State University, Jim Crow laws provided racial etiquette for black people, and black people were expected to be agreeable and non-threatening even if a white person was wrong about something. But throughout history, there have been people that have defied these laws. People like Rosa Parks, who one day decided that she was just not giving up her seat on the bus. Now, when most people think about Rosa Parks, they think of her as some elderly woman that was just so tired that she couldn't get out of her seat. But in fact, Rosa Parks said, that the only tired she was was tired of giving in. And that day at the airport, I guess I was just so tired of giving in. I thought about all the times in my life that I had dimmed my light, that I had made myself small, that I had stepped off of the proverbial sidewalk to let another person pass. I thought about all those times that I was in meetings and people wouldn't even speak to me or speak to me last. 
Or all those times that after a quick hello, people stopped directing their comments towards me. It was almost as if I was the invisible black person that sat by the door. But on that day, I decided that I will no longer be invisible. What if people could decide to show up in their lives just like that? Like Shirley Chisholm, who said, if they do not provide a seat for you at the table, then bring your own folding chair. Our trailblazer, Frida Kahlo, who said, I used to think that I was the strangest person in the world, but then I realized there are so many people in the world, there must be someone just as bizarre and as flawed as I am. And perhaps, perhaps maybe that person is thinking of me too. I want that person to know that I am here. When I made that decision not to move out of the sidewalk, it took over every aspect of my life. My relationships, my work, how I interacted with my daughter, how I chose to treat myself. I was finally going to show up. I was so empowered. I wanted other people to feel the way that I did. So I wrote this blog. Do not move off the sidewalk. And I issued this challenge to marginalized people. For 24 to 48 hours, do not move out of the way of people they perceive are more worthy or who society has told was more worthy. Now, before I go any further, let me make this clear. This challenge was not about being rude. There are often times that you must and should seat your space, often for very apparent reasons. This challenge was not about the common courtesies that we extend to people every day. This challenge was about marginalized people intentionally taking themselves out of the race. The response to that blog was overwhelming. Over a million people read that blog. It was translated into Spanish. People did it not just in America, but all over the world. They did the challenge in London, Australia, Canada, the Caribbean, and in India. One woman from India wrote me and said that in India, it is not race, but caste, where upper class men will hold their space over anybody else. She found it sad, although not shocking that the same thing exists in America along racial lines. It became evident from the hundreds of responses that I received that it didn't matter whether it was caste or race or gender. People that are marginalized will always cede their space to somebody that they perceive is more worthy or that society has told them is more worthy. But, but who gets to decide if you are worthy or not, if that is you, and you have found yourself stepping off of the sidewalk, I am inviting you today to join us on the sidewalk. I am inviting you to step into who you are. I can recall a time when my daughter was on this very campus, and her and her best friend were walking along on the sidewalk, and her best friend stepped off of the sidewalk to allow a group of people to pass, a group of people that she did not even know, but that she perceived were more important than her. And my daughter pulled her back onto the sidewalk and told her, do not give up your space. You do not have to move. And that is the power of standing in your space, the power of standing on the sidewalk. You give other people the permission to step into who they are. So I ask you today, whose permission are you waiting on? If you are waiting on someone's permission, today is the day. I invite you to join us on the sidewalk. I invite you to join me and know that you have a right to be in these spaces, to have a seat at the table in these spaces, to have influence in these spaces, to have a voice in these spaces that is why I stand in these spaces. We are here and we belong here. Thank you.